Today we're going to go over some of the basic components of an electrical system in an aircraft. I'll show you the installation of the master relay, start relay, current limiter, shunts, fuse blocks, and a grounding block to start kind of the basics of the electrical system in the RV4. So I'll show you how we did that. So you definitely want to start with the diagram to keep everything straight. So in this case here, we'll start on the upper left with the battery, in our case the EarthX battery. And then we have the master relay, which is going to turn on the power to the aircraft. And in this case we have a wire going from the positive terminal on the battery to the battery post of the master relay. So here's our wire, it's a four gauge wire. We're just going to trim the ends of it to get the plastic coating off. Very carefully using exacto knife so we don't nick any of the wires inside. And once the cover is off, we'll put the connector on. And if you end up with any little wires hanging out, a few is fine. A couple is no big deal. Just clip them off and get them out of the way. Then we can either crimp that, or in this case, I like this hammer crimper. So we'll give it three good whacks, and it'll be a nice and secure connection. Now we'll put some heat shrink on it, protect it, and now install it in the aircraft. So there's our first wire going from the battery positive terminal to the positive battery terminal on the master relay. It is very specific of which side it goes on, so be careful. Next wire is going to be on the other side of the relay down to the fuse block. Close the same size connector. We put the terminal on the one side already. Remember the orientation is specific. The battery has to hook up to the one labeled battery on the master relay. And then we'll just measure the length of the wire. We'll also measure the orientation that we want the connector to sit at. So we'll just draw a line where we want the connector uh, to eventually sit so we can orient it properly when we take it over to the crimper. Cut it off at the measurement, take the wire out of the aircraft, and crimp an end on it. You see those white protective uh, boots on there? So put those on and put the heat shrink on before you crimp the terminal, otherwise it's going to be a lot more difficult. Again, peeling the shielding off, it's just plastic, it's not really shielding. Put the connector on, and then give it a good couple wax. Uh, with the hammer. Three hits is what I use. Nice solid connector, heat shrink, and there's our second wire in place going from the master relay to the fuse block. Leave the battery terminal disconnected while you're doing all this so you don't accidentally spark something. All right, let's look at the master relay for a sec. It's going to have a diode on it. The diode is going to go from the post to the battery terminal. And this prevents, uh, when you're turning the switch off, it prevents a spark uh, from eventually causing the switch to fail. So you'll see diodes in all of these relays. Now for the grounding block. We'll put that in place and then we'll run a wire from the negative terminal of the battery to the post on the grounding block. 
So there's our grounding block there that we bought from uh, BNC Specialty. Just a bunch of quarter inch fast on tabs soldered in place. And same procedure, we already crimped the terminals on it and we connect the negative terminal to the battery to the grounding block. Now from the master relay, we're going to have a 22 gauge wire going to our master switch. That switch is going to ground out that wire and that's how we turn on the battery to the aircraft. So just to test it out, we'll hook up the positive terminal of the battery very carefully, making sure you don't short out any wires and nothing's hitting the ground. And then you hear that click which is the master relay connecting. Okay, next is the starter relay, or the starter contactor. This is an intermittent duty contactor that's going to start the engine, or at least power the starter. There is a diode on this one as well, but it goes from the starting post to ground. So from that starting post, and then just connect it to how the relay mounts to the aircraft. Then we go from one side of the master relay to the other side of the starter relay. Again, orientation is important. And now we have that wire connected. So from there, there's going to be a second wire. It's going to go into a current limiter, which is what you see there then another wire down to a shunt which is going to measure the amperage going to the alternator and then that wire eventually goes all the way to the alternator. So we mounted these with click bond fasteners just because the rudder pedals are kind of in that location so they don't want any bolts sticking out of the of the rib. So there's the current limiter bolted in place, there's the shunt bolted in place to measure the amperage and now we need to go from that post on the starter relay to the current limiter, from the current limiter to the shunt, and then eventually from the shunt to the alternator through the firewall. So there we made another wire to go from the starter relay to the current limiter, which has a 60 amp breaker on it. And then instead of making a wire, I just used a, a thick copper bar with some heat shrink to connect the current limiter to the shunt. And then from there, we're going to go all the way to the alternator. So we'll make this one long enough later such that after the end installation, it can reach the alternator. And that connects to the bottom of the shunt. And we've done all the connections going from the battery to the alternator. Now for the starter wire, that goes on the other side of the starter solenoid. Again, making that one long enough so that it'll reach the starter after the engine installation. And bolt that in place. And then tighten everything up one at a time. Make sure it's tight following the torque. And then we install these boots so that we accidentally don't short out in the area. No boots on those because there is a cover that goes over top of the current limiter. There you see there. Alright, so that's everything installed and now it's time to test it out. So we already know that the master relay works. So very carefully attaching the battery And there we have the master relay coming on when we ground out that post on the master relay. And now we'll leave it connected, now keeping in mind that the alternator wire is hot now. So be cautious, don't let it ground out itself accidentally. And how do we ignite the starter relay is from the starter post, we take that to positive. So we actually take it to power as a different from the master relay. So the master relay gets triggered by a ground and the starter relay gets triggered by uh, power. So that will go eventually go to a seven and a half amp starter and I just power it out and it does not work. 
So that's why we test these things out. What we had to do is add a ground wire to the base of the starter contactor because we use click bond fasteners to mount the grounding plate and therefore the airframe was not grounded. So we just had to add that wire in there to make sure. And that wire again is going to be hot, so be cautious of where it lies. And the starter post, connect that to uh, positive and we should hear the starter relay kick in. And you'll see the spark as well. So that covers the basic installation of the electrical system from the battery to the alternator and the starter through the relays and the current limiter and the fuse block and the ground block. Build yourself something, take it for it. We'll see you guys on the next one.